Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today are my top 10 Black Series figures that I want to see get a whole new, brand new version. The Black Series debuted back in the summer of 2013. In the eight years of its run, it spawned close to 300 figures or more. Honestly, I should count them, but like, I just don't have that kind of time nor do I want to. Around 2018, Hasbro really upped their game when it came to the Black Series. We got improved face printing and much better joints and range of movement. The downside to this is that it quickly aged a lot of older figures. Figures that have been around for a while. Figures that have been reused throughout the line for years. And we wouldn't be where we are if it weren't for them. But also, I am super ready to give them up for brand new versions the first chance that I get. And we've gotten a few. For instance, the Archive line has been doing a great job of updating faces, but there's more. Hasbro will periodically give us an entirely new version of a character rather than just re-release an old mold. Case in point, the new 2020 Stormtrooper and Clone Trooper got entirely new molds. A few figures like C-3PO and the First Order Stormtrooper just got new arms, which vastly improved the figure. Boba Fett just got a brand new figure based on his Return of the Jedi appearance. Otherwise, he would be on this list. So spoiler alert, I guess, because Boba Fett's not on the list. Although he almost was. Although he kind of is. These are just a few good examples of updates to older figures that we've gotten. Now I did ask for some suggestions for this list on my Twitter account and on a YouTube post and on my Patreon. But this is my own list and some of them might be considered cheating. My wife, for instance, will probably consider some of these entries cheating, but... It's my list, you know. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the list. So in the number 10 spot, like one does with any countdown, we have the Sand Trooper. This is kind of what I'm talking about with the cheating. So like, technically, Hasbro's already made a new Stormtrooper figure. In fact, the first Stormtrooper figure was based on this Sand Trooper figure. So I kind of want the reverse. They haven't made a Sand Trooper variant of the new Stormtrooper mold. And the original Sand Trooper mold has not aged even a little well. It was released in the very first wave of figures back in 2013. Then they kept re-releasing it over and over and over as different Stormtrooper variants. The original one has a wonky helmet and the bowed leg. And it would just be nice to see a Sand Trooper made out of the new Stormtrooper mold. Moving down to number 9, we have the very popular character that I feel was botched from the beginning. Commander Cody. Yes, this right here is another sort of cheat, but on a slightly lower scale in my opinion. Commander Cody has had a figure, but it was a huge letdown to me. It was released in one of the final waves of Phase 2, which was in mid-2015. It was also recently re-released in 2021 as part of the Archive series with, as far as I can tell, absolutely no changes. But that's not enough for me. I want Cody on the new body mold, and I want him to have a removable helmet with the Cody likeness underneath. Ideally, it would be a, a separate helmet and head that you swap rather than remove. I've never been a fan of removable helmets. I want to swap the heads. It's better for everyone, Hasbro. There's no paint rub. I'd also want more blasters than just the one the original Cody came with. And heck, toss in a hologram of Sidious. Why not? There's so many things he could have come with and you just did this. But honestly, you can say the same about any of the older named clones. I want to see them all on the new body, and I want them all to have actual faces. At least the ones that didn't have actual faces in the first place. Next, we have the number eight spot, and that goes to the very popular suggestion on pretty much every social media platform that I put this on, Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith. I know we're getting an archive release of this, but just like Cody, an archive release is just, it's simply not enough. Despite the new face printing, the original figure was released back in mid-2014 at the tail end of the Phase 1 series. Putting a shiny coat of paint on that face, it's like putting a fresh coat of paint on an old dilapidated car. Sure, it looks better, but its wheels are falling off and it just doesn't want to start. The head and the proportions of this figure are all wrong. Paint does not fix this. Honestly, I wouldn't really mind it if they just put this out again from that episode one and two body with a different head on it like they've already used but 
I would also just love something all new, especially something with a Jedi robe. I almost didn't even put them on the list because we just got the Clone Wars version, which is, in my opinion, the best Kenobi available. But it just seems like a shame seeing this old thing with all the new Kenobis. It, it doesn't really match up. And then moving down to number seven, I almost paired seven and eight together because they're often paired together in every list. Almost every entry that recommended Obi-Wan also recommended Anakin Skywalker from Revenge of the Sith. I honestly didn't know how to handle having both of these on the list. They're almost the same thing, but they're not. But I had the exact same problems with both and the same suggestions for both. Anakin was introduced in the line back in 2014, exactly one wave after Obi-Wan. He was also re-released in the archive version with the digital face printing, which is a lot better, and then again in the episode 2 version with some minor tweaks, but it largely had the exact same problems that the episode 3 figure had. And that problem is that this is a figure from 2014, no matter what head you put on the body. And while the Clone Wars version is great and fixes a lot of issues, it's not an episode 3 version. So not only does he need to have an all new body, but we need some good accessories. Again, give us a robe. Maybe even an alternate robot hand, that would be cool. There's a lot of stuff that's missing that we really need. Next on the list in the number 6 spot is a figure we've seen a few times in the line, and that is Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. Now I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking it too. Haven't we had enough Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker yet? Well, yes, but actually no. Every Return of the Jedi Luke that we've had has been based off this Luke from the very first wave of Phase 2, released back at the very end of 2014. And while he's been released with a much better face sculpt, not just face printing, but face sculpt, twice, with the Jedi Knight Luke and the Endor Luke, he's still 90% the exact same figure, down to the rubbery legs, and the wonky elbows. What I would really love is an all new body with all new parts featuring updated articulation. But I think Hasbro could go one step further. What we really need here is a build up pack based on this figure. We need like two or three heads to go with it. A normal one, one with windswept hair, and then a version with a speeder bike helmet. If they can make it removable and have the hair still look good, I guess we probably only need two, but also, we need some important accessories to make this an ultimate Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. He needs to have the belt and the alternate chest piece with the white flap hanging down like he has at the end of Return of the Jedi. He also needs the vest and robe like he had in Jabba's Palace and the blaster that he pulled against Jabba in Jabba's Palace. Also, it would be cool if it came with the bone he used against the Rancor that we're definitely getting. But then also, of course, he needs his Endor poncho. If we got all those, we wouldn't need another Luke Skywalker. And honestly, I'd pay 40 bucks or so for a figure like that easily. I'd rather do that than pay for three or four different figures again. And here we are in the top five, starting with Jango Fett. Jango was first released in 2016 and was one of the first figures I ever reviewed on the channel. He's since been re-released in the Gaming Greats line. That's actually the version I have here. I don't know why I chose this one, I just did. He did get an updated face and the alternate backpack instead of the arena one that he had the end of Attack of the Clones. His mold was also reused and retooled as two generic Mandalorian troopers. In my opinion, if they're going to keep re-releasing this figure as Mandalorian troopers based on this body, I feel like we need a better body. New legs, new arms, butterfly joints. Instead of a removable helmet, give us a swappable head. That way, at least we could have a removable head, you know, for when he gets his head cut off. And I'd love to see something like a flame accessory, flight stand, the works, and also the same two backpacks we've had. This party would be far from over. And in number four spot, we have the original A New Hope, Han Solo. Han Solo here was released in the second wave of figures back in 2013. His likeness looks more like, um... Dustin Hoffman, and his body proportions are just all kinds of wonky. It's skinny and awkward, like a bean pole. We've had a couple of great Han Solo releases, like the Bespin Han and the Endor Han, but I think the original Han Solo deserves an all new sculpt from head to toe. And yeah, I know we're getting this in the upcoming Power of the Force 2 re-release version, but again, I want something all new. 
It's important to me that it comes with the exact same accessories that the original one came with as well. Alternate hands, alternate Stormtrooper belt, regular and Stormtrooper blasters. I mean, that first Han Solo really set my expectations for what the Black Series would be like right out of the gate. And it really never matched it since then. I mean, he came with a ton of accessories and then like nothing. What, what happened there, Hasbro? And then we have my number three spot. And number three was almost a tie with number two. It was really tough to decide. But number three goes to Princess Leia Hut Slayer. Or Jabba's Prisoner, as she was called in the Power of the Force 2 line. Or Slave Outfit, as she was called in the Black Series, which is, which is weird. Anyway, she's been called a lot of things, but what she is, is a huge disservice to everyone's favorite princess. Not only is this face not good, but the joints used have not ever looked good. Sure, she was released in Wave 2 back in 2013, just like Han Solo before her, but she's aged far worse because of all the exposed skin. The joints just make it look terrible. And with recent figures like Dagobah Luke, Hasbro has proven that they can do joints that look great with bare skin. And if there's one thing about Hut Slayer Leia, she has a... <clears throat> she's got a lot of, of, of skin showing. She can also come with her pipe weapons that she originally came with. Honestly, I don't care. Maybe a chain to choke out Jabba? Maybe a diorama with that deck blaster thing she used to blow up the katana? I don't really honestly care. Either way, we deserve a good Leia. Leia deserves a good Leia. And then in my number two spot was actually the first figure I put on this list. We've needed a new one of these since it came out in the very first wave. This is Black Series R2-D2. R2 was, I think it was number four in the very first wave of the first line back in 2013. I'm not gonna really mince words with this. He's too small. I don't know what Hasbro was doing when they made this figure. I don't know who is responsible for his design and his height. I don't know what they used as a reference, but it's obvious that R2 and consequently every astromech based on this mold is too small. And it may be too late because like a lot of damage has been done, a lot. But it's a tragedy that absolutely should be fixed. I also need Hasbro to change how the leg gimmick works. That head twisting thing, it just doesn't cut it. I mean, if clicky pins can get it right for decades, why can't you do that with this? Also, let's keep all those rad accessories the original one came with. Like, that was great. And then my number one spot on my list goes to probably the biggest offender. And that is IG-88 here. And I, I guess consequently also IG-11. I know it's cheating. I don't care. IG-11 is a recent and almost straight re-release of IG-88, and IG-88 was released back in 2015. Where do I even start with what's wrong with this figure? He's too short. He's made of this weird rubbery plastic that is easily warped. If he falls over and his leg is bent even a little bit, it will stay that way forever. And to make it worse, he does not want to stand up. The rubbery hose material over his knees and elbows tend to fall apart and degrade over time, which is just great. But my biggest problem is his articulation, or lack thereof. First, his hips only move forwards and backwards like this is a 3.755 POA figure. Like, what the hell? That should be a crime in the 6-inch scale. But also, he was molded with these weird pipes up and down his legs, and that severely inhibits how he can move them because you're gonna break them. And all of this again also goes for IG-11. All of IG-88's problems are his as well. I mean, he's almost a carbon copy, but with a little bit of a different bandolier. But that's also the biggest problem with IG-11. He has inaccurate hands. If I could get Hasbro to get us just one of any of these figures, it would be IG-88. I love this look so much. This is one of my favorite designs in all of Star Wars. And IG-11 sharing that appearance is one of the reasons I was looking forward to The Mandalorian as much as I was. Hasbro really needs to fix this. So that's my list. What's on yours? What did I miss? Please let me know down in the downstairs area. I love to read and respond to all the comments and I love to see your lists. I'd also love to take a moment and thank the people here for supporting me on Patreon at a Black Series level or higher. 
Thanks so much, guys. It means a lot to me that you do that. If Patreon is not your thing, there's a join button next to the subscribe button, and that helps out the channel by becoming a channel member. But if none of that's your thing, you can also like, share, and subscribe. That affects the YouTube algorithm, and again, really goes a long way. But honestly, just getting this far in this video is the least you could do, and I'm eternally thankful for that. So thanks for getting this far, and I'll see you later. Bye.